Well, it's a blessing to be here with you this morning, and uh, it's going to be fun this morning, but um, I, I believe that God's going to touch your heart as well. Um, I love the attention, so I'm going to start off with uh, kicking some tennis balls around in church. How does that sound? Yeah? I learned how to uh, kick some tennis balls. I love playing soccer. Ready? Catch! Catch! Oh! Don't throw it back, because I can't catch. Yeah? All right, here we go. Lovely. There you go. Nice catch. Nice catch. Yes, I, um, I was born without arms and legs, and uh, my parents were, were dedicated Christians all their lives, and then I came along, and sort of it really tested their faith. See, they actually had no idea that I was going to be born without arms and legs until I was actually born. And it was quite weird because there was no medical reason why this had happened. But the greatest concern was, if God loved my parents, why would he let something that bad happen to them? Why? And you know how in James chapter 1 verse 2 it says, Brethren, count it all joy, nothing but pure joy, when you go through these trials. Well, let me tell you that the last two words on my parents' minds was, Praise God when I was born. Do you know how mothers don't want to hold their firstborn? Like, they're anxious. Oh, I want to hold him or her. Well, when I was put next to my mother's side, guess what she said? Take him away. It was such a tragedy. Can a pure joy. Today, I'm going to share with you the promises of God and the reasons why I can stand up here smiling and have the joy of the Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn to 29, the 29th chapter of Jeremiah. Now, before we go into as you're turning, as I was going up, I just need you, need you just to understand what sort of life I was living, and not only was it difficult for, for my parents, but obviously for me. Now, I needed pretty much 24-hour care. How often do you need your arms and legs? Pretty much all the time, right? Well, I pretty much needed someone all the time. And I couldn't get myself a glass of water. I couldn't really feed myself at times. You know, I'd get my face into that, you know, ice cream. You know, I'd be messy all over. So, you know, I needed someone to feed me and take care of me. And it was, it was humbling at times, you know, when I had to get people to even take me to the toilet. Imagine your parents taking you to the toilet when you're about 11, 12 years old. That's a bit embarrassing, right? Well, I had no choice, pretty much. So that was hard. But I needed them so much and I needed so much help that I thought, man, I feel like I'm even a burden to my own parents. And I told mom, I said, Mom, who's going to look after me when you and Dad are gone? Like, I, I couldn't really see a future or a hope. I never would, I would never believe that any girl would like me, that, that we would get married in the end. No way. I'm still single, just to let you know. <laughs> but seriously, let's read this passage. Let's read this passage. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Now, that is a good promise. But why aren't we then always 24-7? Because our hope and our future sort of depends on the happenings of right now. You know, your deodorant can runs out, your nail breaks. You know, so little things. You get frustrated. But also big things. And isn't it funny how, like, big things happen, and, like, you're asking God for help, but He's not answering you? Yeah? Well, I'm going to share a promise with you, just in a second. But because I really love the attention, I, I want to show you, I want to show off just a little bit more. Okay, at school, at school, I learned how to write with my foot. This is a, a ordinary pen with a plastic holder around my foot. Love to write, love to draw, all that sort of stuff. I learned to type on the computer with my heel and toe, heel and toe, about 43 words a minute. But uh, it's pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, now this is the tricky part, okay? I need a stand for a ringing phone. Oh, thank you, thank you. Good morning, good morning. Now, just to warn you, it might not happen at the first time, but what happens when we fail? Let's start it again. What happens when we fail? Excellent, excellent. Here we go, here we go. Concentrate, focus. Hey, is that cool? (laughs) 
And as you saw on the screen, you saw my, um, saw my wheelchair, my holding. <laughs> Up the holders. Um, do donuts and get it sideways in the wet. It's grouse. It's so cool. Um, love it. Love it. But anyway, getting back to the story. That's enough for showing off, I think, yeah? Yeah. All right. It was hard. It was really hard sometimes. And I, I had this massive list of all the things that I couldn't do when I didn't have. And I'm thinking, well, why me? Like, I'd go to the shops and, and like, point out to people to God. Like, I said, God, why don't, you, why don't you choose her or him? Like, he looks like he could handle something like this. I just can't do it. I, I, it just got hard sometimes. I really wanted to end my life at the age of 10. I just couldn't see anything. But out of all the things that I couldn't do when I didn't have, you know what the, the most painful thought was? When I used to see couples on the beach holding hands. Do you know what I used to think? I used to think this. Man, I'm never going to be able to hold my wife's hand. I'm never going to be able to wrap my arms around my, my children. No, I can't even, can't even really comfort them if they're crying. I can't do this and I can't do that. I won't be able to, you know, get in the car, chuck my wife in the, you know, next to me, and uh, we go to the beach, and, you know, go, go on the surf and put sandal in her hair. You know what I mean? I can't do those fun things. It's little things, but they were very important to me. And it was hard. Now, growing up in a Christian home, I went to Sunday school, and I learned that Jesus loves you, but then I was stumped. At the verse where it says, God made you in his image. And I'm like, right. <laughs> yeah. But it was really confusing because God loves me, right? And he created me in his image. But if he had full control over my birth, I realized, man, why would he make me like this? And I got so angry. I said, God, prove to me that you are real. Prove to me that you made me and that you love me. Why? Why me? And guess what? God didn't answer me. <laughs> For ages and ages. Don't you hate it when God doesn't answer you? So let's go back to that promise. What happens when you're asking for something and you don't get it, or you're seeking God and you're, and you're not finding? Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 12. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Now, why wouldn't he want me to find him now? Well, you know, life has its ups and downs, ups and downs. And it's in those down times where you really realize that, hey, you need God. And there is a reason why he's not answering you yet? I want to tell you this morning that there's no such thing as luck, chance or coincidence that you are here this morning, that you have the struggles and the worries and the cares and the anxious feelings that you have this morning. That is all God ordained, believe it or not. Why does he let us go through struggles? Why does he let us go through suffering? So he can strengthen us to draw us closer to him and grow with him. He has a purpose for everything. In Romans... Apostle Paul, he says, the sufferings have no comparison to what glory has been revealed to it. Romans 8.28, for all things come together for the best for those who love him. Do you know what that means? That means God is not going to let anything happen to you unless he has a good purpose for it. Then you could look at me and you say, well, what possibly good could come out of this? 